Hello, everybody. I'm here today with Halim. Halim is the regional director of uh, GEP, which is a consulting company for procurement. And uh, I think Halim will introduce himself and GEP in more detail. Yes, thank you very much for having me. It's a pleasure to be with you here today at this wonderful event. Uh, so my name is Abdel Halim, short Halim, as I told you before the podcast, just to make it easier. Uh, so I manage GEP's uh, software business in the region. I'm the regional vice president based here in the region, uh, managing um, Middle East and Africa. Obviously, our primary focus markets are UAE, Saudi Arabia, and the GCC region in general. Uh, so GEP has been in business for 25 years. We started as a consulting and services company, and then we built our own proprietary technology, mm -hmm. uh, covering the full source to pay and supply chain uh, business domain. Uh, we work with uh, customers of all sizes, but uh, we do offer our enterprise application um, to uh, procurement and supply chain professionals that work within organizations that would like uh, to advance uh, their capabilities in order to cope with their ever-changing needs. Uh, we are uh, close to 7,000 employees globally, uh, 27 offices, uh, close to 700 customers. So we are a global organization. Because are you here in the Middle East? Uh, so in, in, the mid yeah, in, in the Middle East, uh, at the moment, we're about 16 individuals. Mm -hmm. uh, we have uh, six individuals uh, living in Saudi Arabia, delivering a project at the moment. Mm -hmm. But uh, we are between UAE and Saudi and Qatar. Uh, and we also have regional hubs uh, from a services delivery perspective uh, in Asia and Eastern Europe. Mm -hmm. And they travel frequently, obviously, here yeah. to the region. Yeah. Yeah. So you are basically in the in the software area of LG software yeah? and consulting. So uh, so one of one of the unique offerings of GEP, we we always call ourselves a, a true partner, meaning that uh, we have a one hand to shake approach. Typically, in large procurement and supply chain transformation projects, uh, you would uh, often find that uh, you have a consulting company uh, that would help you to blueprint your digital transformation needs requirements and then maybe support you to find the right software for you. Yes. Uh, other organizations, they would like to only be a software player. So yes. they only sell the licenses. Yes. Other organizations, they will tell you, okay, we'll sell the software and you have to get your own system integrated and then implement it. We are a one hand to shake. This means that we have procurement strategy consultants that could help you in this digital transformation journey from a phase zero perspective, mm -hmm. assess people process technology, assess your current landscape that you have at the moment, and then uh, we also provide our software, implement our software, support our so software. software solution. Then. It's our own software solution. So we own the software. It's our own proprietary technology. It's one of the leading softwares, mm. uh, 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 highly rated and recognized as a leader by all the independent analysts of the world. Spend Matters, uh, Gartner, uh, um, uh, Forrester reports. You will find this in all these reports. But not only from a software perspective. Also from a managed services and from a consulting perspective. Yeah. So that it's a very I know GAP pretty pretty much as a managed service company. Yes. Yes. So the outsourcing. Huh? Yes. So it, historically we were. Yeah. Uh, but when I say historically, I think I think we are of that age, both of us, me and you, and Mark. When I say the, historically, yeah, both a bit older. <laughs> yeah, this, this was a long time back. Uh, but 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 our our software offering has been has been around for about 16, 17 years yeah, now, and, uh, where we have our own proprietary technology that we continue to invest in. In fact, uh, we've recently made a, a massive investment in our product in the last 24 months, where we became hosting agnostic. Mm -hmm. That's why we can host anywhere in the world, and these all these hyperscalers and public uh, cloud providers. Mainly, we work with Microsoft all around the world, mm -hmm. but also recently we started hosting in Saudi Arabia on Google Cloud. Mm -hmm. uh, so our application is fully hosted here, which ticks the box from an information security perspective. Clients uh, in Saudi Arabia that would like to use our software, mm -hmm. uh, but also we move to an AI first mindset. Meaning that our platform uh, has been built uh, on a no-code, no-code um, uh, development methodology, uh, which makes it easier, faster to deploy and accommodate these requirements coming from these customers. But at the same time, this m brings more front-end configuration to our customers. Yes. So this means that you don't really necessarily have to have deep technical expertise to work and configure our platform. We are enabling a, uh, a wider community of non-technical business users mm -hmm. to also take 
uh, a leadership role in developing this technology for their own uh, for their own needs and requirements. Mm -hmm. So I guess in this region there's a lot to do for you. Yes, yes, it's 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 one of our fastest growing uh, regions in the world. Uh, uh, our uh, our founders and 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 the senior management they have made the investment, like I said, by opening an office which, which in which was founded in New Jersey in the U.S. Okay, in New Jersey in the U.S. Uh, and uh, our pretty uh, our co-founders are pretty much involved on a day-to-day -day basis of the operations. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, it's uh, it's in their blood mm -hmm. uh, from a procurement and supply chain perspective. And then that cascades uh, all across the 7,000 employees of GEP. Mm. Uh, so procurement and supply chain, uh, if you compare us to other consulting companies or software companies, uh, they might have uh, other business domains that they serve, mm. uh, maybe HR, maybe finance, maybe audit. For us, procurement and supply chain is our core business. We are a procurement and supply chain company. And that's why a lot of customers, they, they prefer to work with GEP because we speak the same language, yeah. we are from the same industry. We do, like you mentioned, provide managed services and work as an extension to procurement department mm -hmm. from an outsourcing perspective. And also our technology was built by uh, procurement professionals and by feedback from our customer to improve the overall user experience. How do you see the development of uh, procurement in uh, Saudi Arabia? Ah, it's massive. It's been massive. I think I think one of the great things that Saudi Arabia uh, has uh, made a significant uh, footprint in the last uh, seven to eight years. First of all, very transparent procurement policies, yeah. procedures, and laws, mm -hmm. which obviously uh, attracted uh, a lot of global players to come and work in Saudi. Uh, Saudi is a very dynamic environment. Uh, Saudi uh, is going into the right direction in developing uh, uh, their own talents, uh, developing uh, their own market. Uh, we, 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 are, uh, we feel that we are very fortunate that uh, we've been well received by the, by the Saudi market. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, right now in Saudi Arabia, uh, we have a few large customers that are implementing our solutions. We've also worked with various consulting projects here in Saudi Arabia. Uh, and, uh, and 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 I'm happy to announce here with you uh, uh, on your podcast that uh, we have uh, fully hosted our application in Saudi Arabia on Google Cloud. Uh, we are also uh, very close, and when I say very close, in the next couple of weeks, opening our office in Saudi Arabia to say to serve our Saudi customers as well. So, so you, you didn't have an office yet. So we didn't have an office before. Uh, uh, now we've started. Uh, we started the paperwork to have a, an office in Saudi Arabia, mm -hmm. uh, and it will take another couple of weeks. Uh, Where's like, our office now? Uh, the, the nearest office that we have is in the UAE. It's in Abu Dhabi. Abu Dhabi. Uh, uh, and 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 this means that we are serious about our investments in Saudi Arabia. Mm -hmm. uh, we see that this is a very very promising uh, market for for GEP. Uh, and we would definitely be, uh, we'd want to be part of this uh, growth in this market. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I talked with many uh, procurement directors um, here on the, on the conference from, from Saudi Arabia. Yeah. So what everyone is basically telling me, uh, the, the speed of transformation and uh, in uh, digital transformation, in, uh, in training of the people, in, uh, especially in, 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 the, in, the, in the public sector. Yes. Um, which is uh, really amazing for for me. How did you? How, how long you've, uh, you've you've been with GP in the region? So I've been with GP uh, a little bit over three years now. Okay, so uh, three years here are like thirty years uh, somewhere else. So, <laughs> <laughs> so how maybe that how did, you know me? <laughs> how, how did you um, experience uh, those three years? Uh, very impressed. Very impressed. impressed. I think anyone who will come to Saudi Arabia and speak to the Saudis and the Saudi talent here. Uh, very impressed. Uh, why, why are they so fast? How, how, can, how do they do this? I, I, I because think the, because the normally, I mean, I also met uh, many Saudi persons uh, privately, and they are, let's say, from the culture, not the fastest people, yeah. but uh, but professionally wise, uh, they are extremely fast. Yeah, I, I, th I think. How does, how does this happen? Yeah, I, th I think I think they're, they're to be honest, they're fast uh, 360. They're, they're, it's, uh, I'm very impressed uh, of uh, of their hunger to learn mm -hmm. uh, but also very impressed with the, with the existing talent that they have and I think this uh, this stands out as a result of the long-term investment that Saudi as a country has made in their education system in developing their people developing their talent 
which they have reached the stage not right now because this was not overnight. No. Uh, this is a very talented resources that they have here that we equally learn from them. Mm. So we're not coming with a mindset that, you know, we are a global company coming here to, to, to show anybody what they need to do. Not at all. We are a global company willing to localize our approach, mm. learn from the local market, uh, equally contribute as much as they would want to contribute uh, into their advancement and be part of their journey. Mm. Which you work for public and private companies the same, I guess. Yes, yes. We work with private sector uh, companies. We work with public sector companies. Uh, we, we, we work with, with, with companies from different industries. Uh, our, uh, our solutions and offerings and services are vertically focused because we are a procurement company at large. So we do have sector specific expertise, vertical specific expertise that we bring to the table. But at the same time, if you look from a, from a procurement software perspective, our software is very flexible to handle direct and indirect spend. Uh, which, 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 which is very important for for all the customers that they have here, because uh, all the companies that in uh, Saudi Arabia, because they would look uh, at their at their at their procurement uh, spend and categories, and they they see that yes, we are very focused on our direct spend because it's directly related to their core business, but also we would need something that would equally work for indirect spend. Right. And historically, technology was uh, there are few there are few companies or few few tools which really cover both worlds. Exactly, exactly, yeah. exactly. And that's that's the unified user experience that we try to bring to any organization. Mm -hmm. uh, I was just on a panel with, uh, with 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 very talented individuals on the stage at uh, uh, about 10, 15 minutes back, and uh, we we were we were talking about uh, you know. Uh, how procurement technology is going from here, I think. And we have a very strong opinion uh, that, uh, you know, technology, if they don't advance in a way uh, that uh, brings uh, AI first mindset uh, to, the, to the working environment uh, of, of any company, would definitely become irrelevant in the next three to five years. This well, what do you mean by AI, AI first? Uh, that... Uh Every company and every process should implement AI, or what, what does it mean, AI first? Uh, so AI first, it means that think think about how to tackle your problem with an AI mindset. Ah, okay. At the beginning. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and then try to see if it's going to add value to your mm -hmm. uh, to, to the solution that you're trying to propose. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, w one of the things that we've also developed uh, uh, to couple with AI first is uh, uh, data orchestration methodology, which means that why, why it should procurement solutions or any solution in the world act as a sign? Yes, we say we are a unified solution that could consolidate all your procurement, all you spend into one platform. But this platform has to be flexible enough to have extensibility capabilities Good. to also tap into boundaries outside the procurement uh, function, but also outside the organization. And that's why we've developed also capabilities to bring in market intelligence feeds external to the organization that are definitely important for the decision support capabilities of any procurement professional. Tender. Wilson. Wilson. Yeah, yeah. It's, a, I think, very interesting time uh, to be uh, part of this, uh, no. this space. And, uh, and yeah, the, right is the, the right industry in the right region at the right time. Yeah? At the right time. I, I, I yeah. think we're very fortunate. Uh, we're yeah. very fortunate to be uh, uh, part of this journey to see all these advancements happening uh, so rapidly, so quickly, but at the same time in a very smart, structured way. How do you see the, the status of uh, artificial intelligence and procurement in the uh, GCC in the moment? So are there are the, uh, most of the companies already use AI tools or is this still to come? I, I think, I think uh, it's, it's a lot of companies are using it. Most of the companies aren't thinking about it. Yeah. A lot of the companies have already developed specific use cases. And that's also, uh, we, we always try to practice what we preach. So what we've done in our, uh, in our application and our offering to our clients, instead of saying that, you know, there's a, because, you know, some, sometimes people, they think AI is some sort of, a, you know, a, a, a wizard or some magic sitting in the background that's going to do stuff for you, right? It, it, that's not always the case. So, so artificial intelligence has to be coupled with human intelligence yes. in order to reach these uh, results that you want to achieve. So, so what, uh, what, what we've done is that we brought AI use cases into the procurement application. Mm -hmm. So there are specific use cases that we've developed 
uh, in the last uh, in the last couple of years, and we continue to develop and invest in these use cases. Where you're sitting as a procurement user using this application, you want to see what's in it for me. If I come and tell you that, yes, uh, I have an AI application, you must say, okay, fine, I'm a buyer. I'm about to you know run a sourcing event. What's in it for me? What, how is this yeah. AI helping me? So we've developed these specific use cases to make you, uh, first of all, focus on uh, on providing you with the right information uh, supported by by the AI and machine learning capabilities uh, that could support your decision making process but also free you up to make more uh, to, to be engaged in more strategic uh, activities rather than transactional operational uh, administrative burden that uh, typically procurement uh, was was tasked with um, a, a very classic example is contract management, for example. So we 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 we've enabled our AI engine to help organizations in uh, reviewing contracts, comparing them uh, against their um, against their templates uh, with their across the against their red lines that come from suppliers, for example. Uh, so this is this is something that we're not telling procurement professionals that they were not doing before. They were doing before, but maybe they used it used to take them three, four hours, three, four days. Yeah, now with the AI, yeah. yeah, exactly. Now, but now, so. exactly. Now with the AI engine, it takes you a couple of minutes, uh, and and it continu continues to learn uh, from from your purchasing and procurement behavior. That it always this engine is getting better and better and better. Mm -hmm. Now, as a lot of change coming, lot of change coming. We're happy to be part of this change. We're happy to be part of this journey. We, we would always make sure that we would con contribute to this change positively and try to add uh, value to our clients and prospects. Perfect. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much for having me. Yeah. Appreciate it. Thank you very All much. All the best to you. Thank you very much. I hope to see you again. Definitely, definitely. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much. Perfect.